All right, guys, it has been a very busy week. I've been turning locks into slag back in the garden. I've been soundproofing the lock lab, and I think it's time to get back to picking some locks. This is the perfect lock to do it with because a lock picking lawyer sent this to me, and he says, Bill, in 1,300 plus videos, you've never picked an American 748. And you know, he's right. I don't think I've ever even seen one until he gave me this one. Uh, this is two pounds, 1.3 ounces of hardened steel. That's 944 grams. This thing is just honking huge. He did give me a key with it. And I really don't know if this is set up as a challenge lock or if it is just stock. There's what the key looks like. So really good bidding on it. I got to give credit for that. And it works perfectly. Um, you have to rotate a very strong spring on the core. And when you rotate it to about the 90 degree position, you can hear that shackle just shoot out of there. So pretty solid lock, very tight springs. It's going to be a challenge to tension this with just enough tension to bind everything, but not too much that I rob myself of all, uh, all feedback. I'm going to try to pick this one right here on the bench. If I can find the right tensioner, there we go. Ah, I think we can get that and just balance it. Around the camera, Bill. There we go. I think we try it like that. When I look at this keyway, I think that is going to be safe for me to stick my rat yoke in there. And that probably sounded a little funny. A rat yoke is a custom pick maker. Sorry, guys, for those of you who didn't know that. I would never stick my rat yoke in. Well, never mind. That's completely different. All right, let's see what we got. Let me count these. I'm counting six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there are six. I thought there were. that was a five pin key. All right, so there are six. So that's a good thing. All right, light tension. And let's see what this American 748's got in store for us. All right, that was pin five. I got a little click and a very slight turn on the core. Again, I don't know if this is a challenge lock, but basically, here we go. There's counter rotation there on one. Little click. So. Based on what I'm feeling, this seems like a standard American pinning. There's pin three, little counter rotation. We'll click on him. So he felt like a serrated spool. Four, very slight counter rotation. We'll click on him. Okay, there's six, the slightest of counter rotations. And I think it's open. There we go. All right. I will tell you this is not a challenge lock from Lock Picking Lawyer. It would take me a couple of days to get through that, I'm sure. This thing only took uh, like three minutes. Let's go ahead and gut it. And then let's see what kind of improvements we can make to this bad boy in terms of simple improvements to make it a little more resistant to picking. And then I'll pick it again. I did my homework. And I can tell you this takes a... 530 second or a four millimeter and it fits in there perfect pretty solid bolt inside of there you're not going to be shearing that off too easily and you're probably not going to be drilling in on the side to get him either okay there's the armored guard and then there's also you take a look here, there's a little armored plate that restricts the rotation of the keyway. So he slides out like that, and then everything comes out. So let's just get all this stuff out of the way. I will need that key, and we will be needing these guys here in a few minutes. And let's lock him up. Get a pinning tray. And let's see what American put inside of here. Okay, give me that key, like so. We find a follower and hope nothing shoots out. You set him right there. All right, I'm seeing no weirdness. This looks just exactly like you'd expect. Stock lock, six pins. 
I am seeing some serrations, but we expected that. Serrated, 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 and serrated. And inside of the chamber, I really don't see any weirdness. So completely stock on the core. Take a look here. A serrated spool. A ser pure serrated. Serrated spool. So I guess right on him. Serrated, oh, no, there's a standard spool. I don't see any serrations on that guy. Number five. Looks like a serrated spool. And the last one, another serrated spool. All right, it's going to be difficult. Let me just dump these springs. Again, factory stock, they're all going to be identical. Let me div divvy these up here, and let's figure out what exactly I can do to this at little or no cost. We've actually got some really good pins in here already. It's going to be difficult to improve on these, but maybe there's something we can do like threading or undercutting. Let's figure it out and then I'll show you what improvements I made and then we'll get on with a repick and see how much improvement that made. Alright guys, I spent about 10 minutes making some fairly minor changes, very quick and easy. Um, let's take a quick look at the original pinning. When I took a closer look at some of these pins, what I noticed, first of all, they are all serrated spools except in chamber number two, that driver pin. It is a serrated pin, but he's not cut very deeply, so these are probably just either very worn pins or just not real high quality pins that came out of the factory. I'm going to retain all of the key pins, but I am going to swap out all of those driver pins. I'm going to keep those springs too. Instead of using those drivers, here are the pins I am going to use. These are cut quite a bit more deeply, and the, I got these from Mr. Lock. There's some aftermarket company that makes American parts, but they do a really good job of making some, it almost looks like screw, uh, part of a screw, very sharp edges. So if there are any sharp edges in there, they ought to grab a hold of it in the chamber. This is what I've done to the core. I have, I've marked it in red there to make it a little easier to see. I have threaded chambers one, three, five, and six. I didn't do any undercutting because that it's a little bit specialized, takes time. I want to do something very quick. So I threaded them and I just used a 4-36 threads per inch tap. So very easy to do. I used a hand tap on the core and I use, I put I chucked this up in a drill to very quickly thread the core or the uh, Bible. Now when I matched these two up, I didn't thread the same ones. Now I, again, I've marked them in red to make it a little clearer. So chamber one is threaded on both ends. Chamber two is completely clear. Three is both sides. Number four is only in the Bible threads and it's smooth in the core and then everything else is threaded. So I get, I'm, I created a lot of really sharp edges for these sharp pins to grab into. Let me put this thing back together and let's see how long it takes to pick it, see what kind of improvements we get out of it. All right, guys, we'll see how much different that made. Uh, same lock, same key, it works beautifully. All the key pins are the same. The only thing that changed are the drivers. I'm going to use the same tensioner. I'm gonna fumble in exactly the same way. I know you guys count on that. And I'm going to use the same pick. All right, we know there's six, so I don't have to count them this time. And let's see what kind of resistance that puts up. Looking for a binder. I got to click on three. I got to click on three again.
I'm going to click on three again. Or if I can zoom in a little bit. Don't know if that's going to help at all. Make any difference, but uh, trying to show you there's any counter rotation. I think that's counter rotation on six. Okay, I got to click, but no fault set. That was the tiniest of counter rotations on three again. He apparently had fallen down. There is counter rotation on two, very slight, and I got a fault set. Okay, so I'm caught up on one of the two spools, and that would be in position one, or if I recall, it was in position six. Looks like one, and that's pure advantage. I pinned it, I happen to know where he is. I would look around until I found that counter rotation like that. And I think we got him. There, that got him. Still got a deep fault set. I am looking for some kind of counter rotation. I know we have a spool on six, but I'm not feeling any love on him. Okay, that was two. Okay, that is six. I can get on him. Got a minor click on him. Counter rotation on six. Come on. Whoa, okay, drop something. An awful lot of crunchiness in there today. And we put it in there. Okay, I got my fault set back when I touched pin one. And we have an open. All right, I don't have any clue what the time is. I'll compare the two times, but I think it was significantly longer. With just less than 10 minutes of modifications. Let's go ahead and gut him. I'm going to prove to you that that stuff is still in there, but... Just with some minor modifications and some decent sharp pins to grab a hold of those serrations, um, made a significant difference. And of course, I knew where the pins were. I knew what they were. So that made it a little bit easier for me. Move all this stuff out of here. And let's go ahead and get the pinning tray. And let's just pop him open. I like using serrated pins because they don't give a heck of a lot of feedback. They live greatly, compared to spools, they give greatly reduced feedback. When I put spools in there, even serrated spools, argh, let me get that guy out of there. Uh, even serrated spools, once you hit that spool, the person that's picking it knows exactly where they are. They know it's a spool, which and they're pretty easy to defeat. So I don't like to use spools. Okay, the the... Uh, key pins are all uh, stock. I'm just going to dump them right here. We didn't change anything on those guys. And it's still the same. Let me un unzoom this a little bit so we get the focus working. Nice sharp edges inside of there. And on this guy, pull them out. There's our serrated spool. Oh, in one. And then that's a serrated. It popped out of chamber two when I pulled the, there we go. When I pulled the follower out too far. Number three, serrated. Four, serrated. Five, serrated. And six should be another serrated spool.
And there's all my springs. Come on. Come on, six. Right there he is. He was hung up on threads, doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. All right, guys, there you go. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Just get yourself a tap. And again, my tap was the 4-36, very inexpensive at Home Depot, just a few bucks. Tap a few chambers, throw in your security pins, and it more than doubles the pick resistance time. It probably would have been much greater than that had I not known exactly what I'd put in here. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Hold on, before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there. And for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lock picking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.